Hello, my dear friends. By the readings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. Just start our show and I press go live on my channel and start video stream again. Hello, my dear friends. Best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I am a research entomologist, beekeeper and teacher, and I am studying small parasitic wasps, which are parasitoids, by parasitizing different hosts, their meal, and they are developing inside the body of other organisms or on the body of other organisms, and they are considered as beneficial for biological control against agricultural pests, so they are considered like beneficial for human beings, for our civilization, because they can be used against the pests. But nevertheless, they are existing in the nature, natural environment, and for entomologists, for professional entomologists, it's important to study the biodiversity of different insects. More than one million of species of insects are spread all around the world, maybe except of Antarctic, where just only a few species are living. But parasitic wasps are spreading all around Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, South and North America. And in each country of you, where you are living, they are living as well, but they are pretty invisible because they are rather small. They have a size 0.2 millimeters, up to maybe 2 millimeters size. So they are flying somewhere in the air in the summertime, in the springtime, in the autumn time, maybe in some countries even in winter time, in subtropical area, in tropical area. So they are flying like plankton in air because they are very small and are rather invisible. So they are flying in invisible way. They are making very important role in biological control, in suppression of some other insects and other arthropods. So we are regulating the population of other insects and other arthropods as well. And that's why they are important to be studied. But actually, amateurs, the common people, they enjoy usually big insects like butterflies, like watching of them somewhere in atlases, so they're so big, so they're uh, attractive, more for Parnassus, Pieris, all these nice tropical butterflies. They're collected by some commercial dealers all around the world. This is a big business for just bloody commercials. They're sold everywhere in some zoom zoo shops. In, a, in Europe, in North America. So that's why they're highly suppressed by our civilization. And only some of them studied by professionals. So some professionals publishing atlases and describing some new species of insects, including butterflies, night moths, and parasitic wasps, which are here on this poster. Well, as I said, they are rather small, but butterflies were quite big. So people do like to watch some kind of atlases, to take photos of them, to post them on a social media, to enjoy them in the nature. And in many cases, some <coughs> amateurs were creating very large collections of dead insects, taking them from the nature, pinning them on entomological pins and watching them in boxes and under the microscope, or just making display of insects in, on, in special card, card boxes on walls for the visitors and just not only for education, for enjoying themselves just for fun. But these are, again, amateurs just lovers of insects and lovers of dead insects in collections. But what doing scientists? Scientists are creating some kind of heavy books, like this book of Dr. Alex Sorachenko from our Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Sciences. This is a book, Ants of Ukraine. Yes, written in Ukrainian language. And mostly here, not too many pictures, just texts, text text, drawings of distribution, some maps of distribution of ants, and very important morphological features are indicated in photographs, 
in scanning photographs. So that's just rather boring. So not so attractive scanning photographs, white and black, but very important for identification of ants. Because here very important sculpture, important correlations between different segments, different size, pictures of ants, wings for queens and males, drones as well. So different pictures, not only under scanning microscope, but under the common optical microscope, but even white and black are very important. There is also just special database for world database for insects of ants, or world database of ants. But here I wanted to show you just these important pictures of ants from the fauna of Ukraine. So and why it's so many texts? It's more than 400 pages of very difficult text with description of biology. We in description of morphology of this species for their correct identification for correct identification to know a precise name of ant and a group of scientists for instance published this book also with scanning photographs and, and color photographs in the book of in the journal of natural history uh, natural history in london britain so here this issue devoted to calcid wasps which i'm just talking about already with some white and black photographs again with descriptions of biology unique biology and description of unique pictures and photos of calcid wasps parasitic and phytophagous wasps so all these photos are very important also for identification and for designation of type material, holotype and parotypes. So designation of a specifically name for this, for this, for that parasitoid and description for the science with indication appropriate new name, scientific name consisting of genus name, general name and name of author who described it. And how to find these insects? Yes, using sweeping net is possible, but rather difficult because these insects are rather small. As I said, 0 0.5 millimeter, half millimeter up to 2 millimeter size. So some traps are very important, such as the yellow pen traps, like this very common, like a plate, common plate from your kitchen, but plastic one, maybe different size different shape, about 15 centimeters size, deeper is better. You can fill it with water, with salt and shampoo and make an exposition of this somewhere under tree, under shrubs, or just on ground, maybe on stone, just in a quiet place because it can be broken like that with the wind. Or you can put stone here inside and with stone, like with this battery, put here inside and fill with water, shampoo, and wait for one day, just on one night, and come again in morning time with a very special aquarium net, with this with very strong mesh, tiny mesh, so don't allow to take off some very small insects. Yes, you can fill it, this mesh, this net, with insects which will be coming here to this water with shampoo because of color. So insects are flying around just like bees, but invisible plankton, and they will fall down in these yellow pan traps. And then with tiny aquarium net, this fish net, you just take them off and just put them, clean them under the stream of water, clean water from the salt and from shampoo to avoid just dust on the uh, very surface clean it that and then put them to separate boxes for appropriate identification and then put them in a small jars like this or just put them in a big jars like that because in the yellow pan trap you can collect 
sometimes full yellow pen trap or America trap, America plates. Yellow America can sometimes full of insects. Big one, small one, middle size. Smallest will be the most interesting for identification, for study. And after storing them just in 70% alcohol in a rather big size jars, it's important to separate them under microscope to put all different groups in different jars, in different bottles, small size bottles with a label, piece of paper with indication of country, city, village, landscape, date of collection, who has collected, name of collector. And better to store it in 70% of alcohol, so you see here, full of insects. Full of insects in some, not many, just only on the bottom, but on some, some are completely full of insects. Yeah. And better than put them in a refrigerator, in plus 5 oil, better to refrigerator minus 20 to avoid maceration, maceration of tissues of these insects because they will be just swollen sometimes. And after keeping them in a refrigerator minus 20, minus 30, they will be safe for identification, for making microscopic slides. Again, for identification under the microscope, under the microscope. So this way, with yellow pen traps. But another way is very important. Just the way of collecting is rearing, breeding from different material. How to breed insects? What does it mean, breed insects? You can collect host. You can collect host and observe for the biology of this host. Host can be caterpillar, can be adults. Or just mass of caterpillars. Sometimes caterpillars, just many caterpillars are sitting on, on plant, on leaves, on stem of trees. You can collect some caterpillars and observe for them. And some, in some cases, in many cases, obviously, these caterpillars can be parasitized by ichneumonid wasps, by calcid wasps, by braconid wasps. So, and this wasp, the larvae will just hatch in front of the host. So you can collect host and breed. Entomophagous insects which are developing on the body or inside the body of this host and they will be rearing out of the body. So you can keep them in separate jars and then again separate them in, in separate glass tubes. Or very important, you can collect plants with hosts. Plants stems, flowers, leaves, crudes, even just pieces of stems, like, and what, what else? How to do it? You can make it some kind of these packages from tissue, very easiest way to make package with each. Yes, and put in this package some plants with hose, not this too big one. Yes, we can put it inside. So some hosts can come, and this can be plants. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on inside. This can be plants, flowers, seeds, especially seeds, stems, roots, leaves. So where here, this is a big sample of plants with hosts, infested with hosts. So some phytophagous insects developing on stems, inside stems, inside. Uh, flower, bear, flower pots, inside flowers, inside seeds. So, and with rope. All right, here, this one. You can close it and wait. Wait for the rearing. But better to wait in a more clever way, just to use a jar, which is, you can use for keeping material and alcohol, and attach a jar to this. Tissue package. Yes. And make a knot. Using a rope and make a knot. 
So and you can receive this rear in box. So very simple rear in box. So all insects which are here inside plants, inside seeds, inside stems, inside leaves, inside galls, just swollen pieces of uh, stems or, or galls on fl on flowers, galls on roots, galls on leaves. So insects will be rearing after overwintering, like now in the winter. But if you can wait a little till the after winter till the spring in the springtime or just gradually in the summertime as well, insects will be rearing and coming to the light inside this glass jar. Inside glass jar. You need to put also again in, inside the piece of paper with label again with date of flower or with city, country, date, date of collecting and name of collector. So insects will be coming here and here we will brush Carefully, you can separate all insects and keep them on cotton layers or in plastic jars, or better in glass jars because they avoid electricity of insects and they can be broken sometimes in plastic jars or in plastic Eppendorf tubes, Eppendorf tubes with ethanol for identification and for identification with DNA methods of modern identification style okay so and again you can separate all of these insects after rearing in separate glass tubes better glass tubes close them carefully and the right label they can be used for identification and for study of taxonomical study for identification of precise name of this or that species. And you can use many packages like this for, for breeding insects like that, because you can collect mm, dozens or maybe even hundred samples during the summertime, you know, for a period of summertime. During three months, you can collect hundreds of these samples for breeding and all insects will be coming out. Will be a lot of insects, samples for Sorting in the winter time, like now, when insects are not outside, but we're inside laboratory for sorting and for identification. It's very important labor in the winter time. A little bit boring, but also pretty entertaining. Because today I show you also insects which you can find in samples. Definitely, you can find insects alive like that as i said after rearing for instance here which is insects and this is parasitoid of genus pediobius pediobius very nice shining female of a genus pediobius parasitoid of caterpillars and parasitoid of pupa of different moths so shining blue and greenish color Family Eulophidae. This is parasitoid and the parasitoid of pupae and sometimes caterpillars and on very wide variety of hosts. Very attractive species. And for as I said you about breeding insects. In some cases you can collect insects in small glass or plastic tubes and separate them one by one. Here I collected insects on plant. In a field, so I collected parasitoids just on on plant when they were parasitizing the host. And you can be attentive, keeping these small, tiny plastic or, or glass jars, and put insect directly, put parasitoid directly inside small, and close it. So here, on my video, I collected just ten or maybe more individuals during a couple of days of careful observations for parasitoid of a genus Entodon, which parasitized weevils, weevils, such interesting weevils, which will lay eggs inside stems of a composite plant, plant of a genus Onopordum. And they are quite big, about three, four millimeters size, but egg larval parasitoid of 
genus Lixus. You see, also family Eolophidae. Here we're just walking around. You can use them for biological experiments and then also for identification. But if you collected insects with a sweeping net or with rearing from hosts, they can be stored carefully on cotton lawyers and inside special packages. As I explained to you before, some special packages with thin co cotton lawyer. So insects can be put on cotton, spread a little bit with brush, and you can see here different families, and not only Hymenoptera, but also Diptera on le from left side, this Tefritidae fly in the middle part, as I see here, different families in uh, black color. This is Euritamide, now just in the center, Euritamide family down male of Pteromalide here, B1, this is Pter uh, Braconide family, parasitoid, Pteromalide family, again very lovely shape of body, Euritamide, Euritamide females, and yellow probably, Eulophide, Bl black color most of species of Euritamide, again Braconide, two individuals of Braconide family, on the screen, who is else? Tefritidae fly, Euritamide, Euritamide is coming, Euritamide male on the right side of screen, Euritamide male downside of screen, Braconide on the top, uh, some small insects, some rather big, but size here about two, three millimeters, green one of a family, Torimide, Torimus, male probably because with very short abdomen, blackish to Euritoma or family Euritomide, Tefriti and again Euritomide down there. So you see here how insects are spread and this is material from collecting I guess, collecting by sweeping net on stepper region. On collecting on grasses. Again, Euritamide on the right side. Let's start to watch the sample with material collected in ethanol. So, here in ethanol, this is formicidive. These are a couple of ants, and these are very long body, elongated body of Ichneumonidae flies, Ichneumonidae parasitoid flies. To be correct, wasps, parasitoid wasps. Again, here. Diapride with swollen abdomen here, Ichneumonide, this B1 with, without wings and Formicide, Diapride, Diapride with sharp top of abdomen, Diapride in the center, on the right side, Ichneumonide. Ichneumonide were always here, just in this sample, with very probably of family Anomalanine, a very thin and elongated abdomen, thin and elongated abdomen. You see, so many, and all of them here, we came just in one sample, collected in yellow pen traps, as I showed here, yellow color, this is a soft fly, Tentridinide, soft fly with Diapride, and the yellow pen traps were just staying on ground in orchard near the grape wine trees, grape brush, br <coughs> shrubs. So fly, so fly on the left, Ichneumonid on the right. Okay. Let's see how it looks like Euritamide in alcohol. Here, this is Euritamide family under the microscope with high magnification, they are in ethanol, so a soft body, they can be used also for DNA study, for DNA identification, if you keep them in 70% alcohol. Hello Andre, hello, hello, we are watching just small parasitic wasp under microscope, and so body 
here the body about 3-4 mm size. So these are parasitic wasps, they are not stinging, they are only parasitizing another insect. And this Eurytoma can be parasitoid or can be phytophagous. So Eurytoma genus very, includes many species, over 100 species. So with some species phytophagous, some are parasitic. Yes. And here antennae, very special color, shape of antennae. Okay. And this one, pteromalidae, pteromalidae family, Sh special shape of wings. And this long antennae for the parasitoid of family. Mymaridae, egg parasitoids, egg parasitoids. This is Mymaridae, egg parasitoid. This is Pteromalidae. Wien, antenna, antenna, segmented, special segmentation of antenna. And shining body, greenish, yellowish, and violet color. Here I show you another sample with interesting structure of wings. You see here there is are elongated wings with very special stigma, enlarged vein stigma belonging to family Pteromalidae. Some males have, they have very unusual structure of wings. Not very short way, marginal vein, but swollen, so huge. Huge vein, so wings are, they have a special adaptation. You see here, black colored like a spot. This is a special adaptation for flight, a special swollen part of a vein. Very interesting, unusual, and like a dimorphism for males and females. Male has such kind of vein, and females we don't have. And here, antenna, segmented antenna of uh, species of a family Pteromalidae, I guess. And they kept here in 70% alcohol. Yes, Pteromalidae. You see here no swollen part. Just very thin marginal vein and radial vein and post marginal vein. So and now I show you another in insect, another parasitoid. This parasitoid with very hairy wings, here not so good visible. These are Mymaridae with very thin wings and long antennae, and another with hairy wings and short antennae. These are belonging to the genus Oligocita. I'm studying Oligocita, I'm studying Trichogrammatidae family. So they're belonging to the family Trichogrammatidae. This is not electronic microscope, this is very common microscope and very simple camera. Very simple, not very complicated camera. Electronic scanning microscope making just white and black pictures only. But here you see colors. This is my Maride, my Maride fly. And here not very huge magnification. So just a relatively small magnification for separation of insects families. And I said for separation of them in small plastic or glass jars for the appropriate study and making microscopic slides and microscopic investigation later, one by one. Here, Mymaridae flies. Mymaridae family and Trichogrammatidae family with hairy wings, hairy wings. Trichogrammatidae has developed wings on wings and hairy wings, but Mymaridae has very short wings, short uh, short veins on wings, but wings also very hairy and different structure of antenna for sure. Here in Trichogrammatidae with very short antenna, with very short antenna and sometimes with very short marginal vein. Here, Oligocita. 
egg parasitoids of some leafhoppers. So we lay eggs inside eggs of leafhoppers concealed inside stems or leaves of plants. So very interesting parasitoids. Many of them were collected in a rice field, like rice fields, very common in India, in Thailand, in Malaysia. So oligocyte is very common and widely spread all around the world. More than 200 species and difficult to study because type material not always available to compare correct species. And many species were described in India, in China, and with very poor descriptions, especially old descriptions are very poor with very simple white and black pictures, so very difficult for comparison of species. So that's why I did here genus Ceraninosus, egg parasitoid of larval parasitoid of trips. And all these are Oligocyta trichogrammatide. All of them collected in yellow pen traps, as I showed. Yellow pen trap. But if we can use microscope, the last but not the least picture will be today will be under the micro if we put them under the microscope under the very good microscope where she's taken very high magnification photo so you see here colorful picture color colored picture colored with greenish color left side this is antenna on left side head and here middle side this is thorax of a body on the left side you see segmented antenna and this genus belonging to a genus Tetrastichus, family Eulophide, and magnification is really huge. So very precise microscope, very careful multifocus study. So I can increase even the size of antenna and the size of a body total about two millimeters. So this not more than one millimeter now on this screen or even less. Less than one millimeter, this is a whole size of screen now. Antonym less than one millimeter. So you see, this is a very huge magnification of insect. You, we can see structure, even some seta, some small hairs on the body. Body is shining, green, green and violet and yellow shining with very well developed wings, legs. And you see here, I'm not sure what here. No, here just photo of thorax. Abdomen is not inside, so this size just only one millimeter. So I try to make um, as much magnification as possible. So the bigger size, to you can recognize better all details of a structure for which are important for identification and for comparison of different species, because small picture will not give you just some characters, morphological characters, but big picture, big photo, allow to see invisible characters of insect and to make comparison between one species and other species and make decision about correct name about correct identification so this is a short lecture today about parasitoids of different families about methods of uh, collecting just a little bit for in for introduction about how to collect them and uh, in any countries with some very observative and devoted amateurs, lovers of insects and professional entomologists. It's possible to find new species for science. What does it mean, new species for science? New species, which is undescribed species. Because even Linnaeus 200 species years ago gave first names of insects. But many species of insects are still not described unknown for the science. And the obligation of taxonomists is to give name not only for big octopus, not only for big bees, but also for very small parasitic wasps and describe them in scientific literature, in scientific journals, making very complicated, very long description of morphological characters and giving them names precisely for correct identification to know better the biodiversity of species of parasitic wasps and other insects. So this is obligation of taxonomists to describe species, unknown species in taxonomical literature, 
and also, if possible, to study their biology, because biology relations between parasitoid and between host, which is what is the host and what is the parasitoid is coming to the host, and which what is the meal, what is the host of this parasitoid. In many cases, it's unknown because parasitoid is small and host is host is small and also has a very complicated biology hidden somewhere, concealed in plant, and in, also invisible sometimes. Yes, my PayPal is activated. <laughs> yes, right. I activated PayPal just for fun, because just it's open now in Ukraine. Some years ago it was not possible, but now PayPal is working. So good indication that, by the way, if you want to send a uh, as support for a couple of coffee, you can use PayPal, you can use Patreon page to support our channel, or you can use what else? Press on the bottom join under the screen. Jo so I never used myself, but I never sent on my account, but I know it should be working through, I checked it through email. You need to use email to send some donation on PayPal and PayPal will consume it and just when I knock 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 on the account of PayPal PayPal will ask can I give you and can resend it to me on my account so this is a way and if I, you press on the bottom join under the screen of bottom so it's also working collecting money through the YouTube channel so there are difficult, different ways for support of to receive donations for YouTube channel. So welcome to my Patreon, PayPal and join membership of YouTube channel. I have just one assistant and one lady who is just supported me pressed on the bottom assistant entomologist. So you can check it how it's working. So you can in check all just features of this membership under the screen of video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for and Andrew. Thank you for your interest as well. We can communicate also on telephone for some secret questions. Yes. Thank you for coming and press like, write your comments, ask your questions, and don't forget Ukraine is forever. Good luck and see you soon. We support Ukraine, Ukrainian army in Ukraine is fighting for freedom and independence. Ukraine is forever. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Bye bye. And we do not support some bad countries and bloody neighbors. Thank you for coming. My Patreon page to my Patreon page, not neighbors. Neighbors are bloody. <laughs>